Is it okay if I ask Jenny a question? Me? I'm All gonna right. ask you a question. Ask her. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, sorry. The Women's March was a really big deal. Did the gravity of that whole event sink in? Like, you know, um... This is a film about Ginny. There are some things you should know about Ginny. I don't believe in secrets. I want to know everything. Some secrets about Ginny. She loves her cat. Like, I actually physically want to eat her. to suffer kitty torture time. She loves Michael Jackson. She loves her best friend, Moist Paula. Ginny's not used to being on this side of the camera. She's a producer. She produces films and shows and talks and marches and shows at marches. She's produced and curated so much stuff with so many great people. The Roots, Erica Badu, Common, Pharrell, Dave Chappelle. Somebody was bound to make something about Ginny. Don't you think my house looks crazy right now? Yeah. Do you know what that's called? So Ginny produced it. Yeah. yeah, and they're taking our pictures for a movie. Because that's what she does. I produce. That's what I do. And Ginny's got juice, so she got some heavy hitters to be in it. Ginny got her start in the music business working for this guy because one of her dear friends, Rich Nichols, was the Roots manager. Rich Nichols was my mentor. When he passed away, I got my first tattoo ever with my business partner. We both got it on our middle finger because Rich really taught me how to stand up for myself and how to curse someone out if I needed to. I was a school teacher. Rich Nichols took me out to dinner one night, and next thing I knew, I was on the road tour managing the roots. Our modus operandi was that women on our staff were way more efficient than men were. I think like his selling point was, and she likes records too, Amir. OK Player was Questlove's website. And while I was on the road, I got pretty involved with the website. Soon thereafter, I really wanted to plant my feet in one space. And Rich thought it would be a good idea to pull me in to be part of the OK Player team. At that point, the team was one person, Dan Petruzzi. And Dan and I worked together for the last 14 years, building OK Player from some nerdy music message boards into a full service media company. She kind of whipped up OK Player into shape. In our story, Jenny's probably Noah. She's the one that gathers two of every animal. She organizes everything. In 2011, Jenny co-founded OK Africa, a media company that connects a global audience to arts and culture on the African continent. Jenny is a really hard worker. She learned that from her parents. Oh, here's Jenny's bat mitzvah. Oh, yeah. This, but look the, at the bitch, the flip. bitch flip. I probably had a whole can of Aquanet up in that hair. Mom used to tell this story when I was little, when I was learning to climb the stairs, yeah. how I would like climb two stairs and make myself fall, and then climb three stairs and make myself fall, because I wanted to control the fall oh, so I knew what it felt God. like. So I it's never like heard super control. Story so like, sad. <laughs> like I still do things like that to some extent. For example, like when I was really little, travel was really scary for me. And fast forward a few years, and I decided to become a tour manager for the Roots and go around the globe. And it's like buses, planes, that automobiles was crazy. everywhere. That was fucking crazy. Since the Roots took her on tour in 2003, Jenny's been comfortably behind the scenes. This year, that changed. Since yeah. I produced the Women's March on Washington, suddenly I'm thrust in a space yeah. where like I'm asked to be on podcasts yeah. or do this panel talk yeah. or be part of this photo shoot, all stuff that I'm not that comfortable with. Even though Ginny and Becky don't love being the center of attention, they both work extra hard to make sure their voices are heard. When I'm exhausted, I'm like, you know what? I'm a woman in a field where, what, 20% of us are women that are represented by high-end galleries. That's really important to me outside of just like my own personal motivation for making the paintings. But I envy that about you too, that you're in the position because your yeah. art is your career. I know, I know. So if anyone treats you that way at all, yeah. you can just be like, fuck yeah, you, yeah, like yeah. fuck off, get yeah. out of here. Yeah. I work with a lot of people. You have to be like, times... you have to do the woman thing where you like it's feel true. out this and then you feel I do that, that out. I do that and... woman thing and I feel like there are definitely times when I notice that my voice is being left out of a conversation or there's a meeting happening that my opinion isn't being considered in. And I remember touring with The Roots in the early days. I would show up to venues and more than half the time they'd be like, uh, where's the tour manager? Yeah. And I'm like, right here. I didn't look the part. Yeah. On January 21st, 2017, Ginny's and more than five million women's voices were heard. We who believe Freedom cannot rest until it comes. 
after the election, I was filled with fear and anger and rage, and I needed to act. And when my business partner, Vanessa Rubel, reached out and said, there's this thing on the internet that's starting to happen, and it looks like it's going to be a women's march centered around women's issues and really issues of human rights. A switch went off and I instantly said, I'm all in. For the Women's March on Washington. And I'd like to introduce my hero, feminist icon, Gloria Steinem. Activism is not only going out there and marching, but it's also the respect that you have for people's difference of opinion. My father used to say, we can disagree, but never in hate and violence. As long as we can have the conversation going on, on any issue whatsoever, we can move forward. And if we see each other as each other's keeper, then we are on the right path. The moment you start seeing the person in front of you as less than you, you're no longer an activist because everybody has a right to disagree and to agree at the same time. Naturally, Jenny curated and produced the music at the Women's March. Toshi Regan was our musical director. There are so many different gifts that I was given that came out of the march. Mm -hmm. And one of them, I think, was just getting to learn from you and watch you. <laughs> I've done a lot in my life that revolves around social justice and uplifting other people's voices, but like as an activist, as a real organizer, and thinking consciously in that way, I learned so much from you already. But I'm wondering, are there more words of advice you can offer me? Activism is a call that each individual has. You have to show up for whatever it is that you think you have to show up with. And then you bring what you have. It's a deal with your soul. You do it because you have signed your name on a line. So when you go out and you sign your name on a line, that is an act of defiance. And it is an act of forward moving. And in those moments, you are very powerful. Even when you're by yourself, you're very powerful. You know what I always tell everybody right now is, you know, put your superhero cape on. And, and fly out into the light. For the very last song of the day, Toshi led the band in a performance of Ella's song. Ella's song is a song my mother wrote using the words of the great Ella Baker. And it's also referred to as We Who Believe in Freedom Cannot Rest. It's been used in a lot of movements. And we wanted to close the march with it, so I made a version with instrumentation and everything. We have everybody come up and sing it. We It showed the power of song yeah. to bring people together. Sometimes I think people underestimate the power of music to move your soul, to change minds, to change ideas. After the Women's March, I started a chorus with some of my creative partners from the march. It's an amazing group of singers who come together to sing in community. It's called the Resistance Revival Chorus. And our mission is to sing protest songs using joy as a form of resistance. I want to ask you a question. You did this thing, and we never talked about it really. The Women's March was a really big deal. Did the gravity of that whole event sink in? I feel like even now it hasn't fully sunk in. I was a cog in the wheel, one of maybe 20, 25 essential women that actually made this happen. And the reason everyone came on board was because women are marginalized around the world. Women are disenfranchised around the world. When I think about that day, the thing that's like really resonates with me is the hope. Because I think above and beyond anything else, we brought a real sense of hope to the country that day. We saw in those streets the truth of it. We talk about wanting to form a really, truly intersectional feminist movement. When you walk through those streets and talk to people, the amount of different people who all came together that day it was incredible. It was every slice of America was represented there in that march. We who believe in freedom cannot rest.